Good day, my viewers. I welcome you to our continuation learning series of science and mathematics education. Which topic are we looking at today? We are going to be looking at the subject chemistry and the topic before us how to calculate the relative molecular mass of substance. In the previous edition, we talked about what compound element and the rest. So in this edition, we are going to look at how to calculate the relative molecular mass of certain substance, be it especially compound. At times, we'll be given a particular compound, and we are being told to calculate the relative molecular mass. So how do you go about it? Let's look at it in this edition. But before you go on, please kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel, press the button, give me a thumb, press the button, and subscribe so that you see all the other topics in this channel. Let's go back to the topic today. Now, having said that, now, assuming you are being given to calculate the relative molecular mass of a particular substance, how do you go about it? Now, the relative molecular mass of a substance is basically what is just the sum, the sum of all the atoms of element in a particular substance, especially in a compound. So they give you their respective relative atomic mass. Okay, the relative atomic mass are going to be added up together. You sum them together. So when you sum them together, they give you the relative molecular mass. By the way, what is the relative molecular mass? Relative atomic mass, by the way, relative atomic mass. What is this? Now, relative atomic mass, this is just this, this is just the, the average, the average mass of an atom of element, how heavier, the average mass of an atom of element is heavier than 112 atoms of carbon. So if you look at you compare the average mass of one atom of a particular element with the 12 atoms of carbon. So when you compare them together, you get relative atomic mass. So you want to say it RAM or RAM, relative atomic mass is what? The average or the average mass of elements. When you compare the average mass of elements, okay? Average mass of elements. Compare with what? One twelfth, one twelfth mass of carbon atom of one atom of carbon, one atoms of carbon. So when you compare the average mass, average mass of element, so you compare the average mass of element with one twelfth mass of one atom of carbon. That gives you the relative atomic mass. And this relative atomic mass, you are going to sum together, you add them together to know your work, relative molecular mass. Okay, now, and this relative atomic mass can be measured by what we call mass spectrometer. Mass spectrometer. That is the instrument for measuring the relative atomic mass. So each of the elements have their respective relative atomic mass. Okay, so I will say that. So where are we looking at? We want to look at how to calculate the relative molecular mass of a given compound. Example, here we are. We are being told to find, find the relative molecular mass, relative molecular mass of, let's say, sodium sulfate sodium sulfate otherwise called sodium tetra also sulfate 6 as we have been told to calculate the relative molecular mass of sodium tetra or sulfate 6 or sodium sulfate that is the formula mass Na2SO4 we have been told to calculate the formula mass or relative molecular mass of sodium tetra or sulfate 6 or sodium sulfate you can call it that given that their respective relative atomic mass is given. Sodium is 23. Sulfur is always 32. Oxygen is always what? 16. So that is their respective relative atomic mass. They always give you, use it to calculate the relative molecular mass. Having said that, how do you solve a question like this? Now, what you have to know is that analysis of this compound give us that. If you look at it, break it down, we have two atoms. Two atoms of sodium, okay, which is so I say two multiplied by the given relative atomic mass twenty three. 
Okay? Second one is sulfur. We have one atom of sulfur. Sulfur is there is one. One multiplied by the given relative atomic mass, 32. Okay? And then the last one is oxygen. We have four atoms of oxygen in the compound. We now say four atoms. Four atoms of oxygen. So that means four multiplied by 16. So when you do your calculation, 2 times 23 give us what? 46. 1 times 32 give us what? 32. 4 times 16 give us what? 64. So by the time you sum them, 46 plus 32 plus this. So if you add 6 plus 2, 8, 8 plus 4, that will give us what? That will give us 12. Carry your 1. 1 plus 4 is 5. 5 plus 5 plus 3 give us 8. 8 plus 6 give us what? 42. So for this case, our relative atomic mass here is what? Is 142. Relative molecular mass. Okay. So relative molecular mass of sodium sulfate or sodium tetra of sulfate 6 here is what? 142. Let's do another one. Now, look at another question again. We have been told to calculate the relative atomic mass of calcium chloride. Another question. Calculate. Calculate the relative molecular mass or formula mass. Relative molecular mass of, of calcium chloride. Calcium chloride. Calcium chloride. Okay. Calcium chloride. So, given that the formula mass calcium chloride is CaCl2, and our respective relative atomic mass, calcium is always 40. Okay? And chlorine is what? 35.5. Now, they are being given this question. How do we solve it? As usual, we now say calcium, the compound is calcium chloride. We have Calcium, how many atoms of calcium? One atom of calcium. And remember, our calcium given here is 40. And as a one multiplied by 40, what about our second atom here? It's chlorine. Chlorine. We have two atoms. Two atoms of chlorine. Which is when I say two multiplied by the given rate of atomic mass, 35.5. So now sum it up. 1 multiplied by 40 gives us what? 40 plus 2 multiplied by 35.5 gives us what? 71. So by the time you sum them together, 71 plus 40 gives us what? 1, 1, 1. 111. That's the relative molecular mass of calcium chloride. So that's how to find the relative molecular mass of a given substance compound from relative atomic mass. So this is where we are going to stop today. So like I used to say, press the button, subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you're able to see all the other topics we have done in this, today in this series. And let me hear your comments, your view on the topic being discussed so far today. Hear your comment and see your comment on the topic we have done today. So till we meet again, like I used to say, remain scientifically intelligent. Bye-bye. Thank you.